sorry. I just, I just did this whole video and it turns out I hadn't pressed record. So I'm pretty miffed. Basically, this is the first video since 2017 and I've tried to record it many times, like four or five times in the year since and either I've been cut off midway through because someone's come home or I just haven't been happy with the recording afterwards. So I'm hoping this is the last one now. And well, I hope the last, I hope the time I just did was the last time, but it turns out I'm a moron and I didn't press record. So let's hope this is the last one. So because I have read so many books since my last video, in fact, I smashed my goal of my Goodreads goal, which was 40 books for last year and I read 53. That would just take me, that, I'd be there like two hours trying to tell you all the books I read. So I'm just going to do my five star reads of 2018. So there's only like seven or eight or something like that. So to start the year, the first book I read was a five star read. So in fact, I've got a copy here because I bought it and I'm glad I did. It's The Only Ones by Carola Dibble. So first of all, look at that cover. Obviously that drew me in. And it is a five star, uh, sorry, it is a sci-fi, which I'm not a big fan of sci-fi. There's not enough character development in there for me. So I don't usually go for them. And I'm not, I'm not gonna say I wouldn't have gone for it if I'd known, because I think I did kind of know it was sci-fi, um, but the other elements I was told about sort of outweighed that for me. So it's from the point of view of Inez, who has a quite unique character voice actually, it's really well written she's really gripping to listen to and it's set in a post-pandemic world where she's immune to most well all of these dis diseases so she offers herself up as a test subject and offers like genetic material for people wanting whatever and this woman comes to her who's lost all her family and she wants her to provide the genetic material to create a new baby for her and Inez not only offers to do that, but offers to actually be the surrogate as well. So she's basically grown a clone of herself. And then the mother backs out. And so Inez is left with this child. And it's just about her trying to raise this clone. And it's so incredible as well. The book's really full of really like scientific talk, but it's not overwhelming. It doesn't beat you over the head with it. it it's really intriguing, like obviously because it's futuristic it's, a lot of it's going to be made up and so it, it's not real but you want to know what's going on and you want to know what's happening and what little experiment they're doing this time and so yeah in that case it's really interesting and then obviously the emotional the, the family side the human side is so amazing I cried because I cried everything of course I did uh, so very highly recommend that one Next, I read The Bedlam Stacks, which I don't have a copy of because I got it from the library. Um, this is by Natasha Pulley. So I had previously read her debut novel, which was The Watchmaker of Villagree Street, and it was really impressive. I think I gave that four stars. So it was lacking a little, a little something, but it was very good. And so I was like, yeah, I'm going to read her next one. And that was The Bedlam Stacks. It is the book I've recommended to people the most all year since I read it. So usually you're like, oh, what kind of thing are you into? Oh, oh, I recommend this if you're into that. I haven't really cared what anyone's into. I've just been like, you're going to like this. You're going to like this book. It's that good. It's set in mid 1800s and it's about this British guy who used to work for the East India Company as a smuggler and he's sort of been out of commission because he got injured and he's sort of stuck at home trying to be this retired guy and not really enjoying it then the east india company come to him and they basically want him to go into peru where all these trees are that the bark is used to make um quinine for treating malaria and they want him to smuggle it out so he says he's definitely going to do it because he obviously doesn't want to be sat at home any longer and he decides to go back to this village where his family have connections like old connections with. I think his fam his father went there or lived there for some time. And so he pretends he's going there to reconnect. And he really goes in hoping to smuggle out these tree cuttings. When he gets there, he meets this priest called Raphael and he finds out that, oh, I don't know what that was. And he finds out that 
this village is really superstitious like they've there's a border where the Amazon forest begins and there's a salt line where the, they're very superstitious about not crossing it because everyone who goes into it is killed in mysterious circumstances and they have these statues that they sort of worship or um, give gifts to and apparently they move and so he gets there and he's just sort of trying to work out what's true what isn't true and how he's going to accomplish this task basically and it is just the relationships he makes with some of the villagers and Raphael and what he learns and like the mystery of what's going on and whether stuff is true or isn't true is so intriguing so yeah that's probably my number one for the entire year to be honest next I also have this book is girls will be girls daring to oh sorry dressing up playing parts and daring to act differently and it's by Ema O'Toole so it's about gender stereotypes and gender performance and basically where a lot of these um, stereotypes come from and why certain things are pressed upon us by society and then Ema O'Toole sort of goes into little ways that she's been trying to break these stereotypes and not conform in her life and how they went she's a very funny writer by the way this is a really funny book um, and it's just really educational but not in an overwhelming way or like an overly academic way she re makes it really personal and really easy to read like I remember reading it and thinking that like high school students should be made to read it I mean everyone should be made to read it really it's just so well written and so clear in what it's trying to say and explain so very highly recommend that one the next book I read was Circe by Madeline Miller. So previous to reading this, I actually went to a signing with Madeline Miller and I got my copy of The Song of Achilles, which is here, signed, which is also a five star read, by the way, if you haven't already read that. So Circe is another um, Greek mythology retelling. So Circe was the son, no, the daughter of the sun god Helios and she was sort of like a low rung of divinity so I think she was a nymph so she doesn't really have a lot of powers and then for certain reasons in the story she is exiled on this island alone and it's about her working out her own way of magic and basically developing her witchcraft um, and certain people she meets uh, during her time exiled and it's just so well written. Madeline Miller is an incredible writer. So yeah, if you haven't read Song of Achilles yet and you haven't read Circe, get on it because they're both excellent. After that, the next five star was The Absolutist by John Boyne. This is set in World War One, and it goes between like mid-war in the trenches and after the war. And I can't remember what the main character's name is, but he's basically showing you his experience in the war with his friend who you know eventually is killed in some way and then after the war it's about him meeting with the family of his friend and he's sort of fighting with the decision as to whether to tell them the truth or the whole truth at least of what occurred to result in his friend's death and so there's a not a twist at the end but a sort of reveal that is really good and I'm pretty sure I cried as well and I wouldn't say the plot is particularly outstanding like it was really good I wouldn't say it was blow me away good but mainly the thing I remember really enjoying was John Boyne's writing to be honest there was certain pages in the book where I was like that was described really really well like I really saw it and I like the way it was described so yeah the storyline was was good but the writing was really, really good. It was just easy to read and nicely descriptive. So that was a good one. Next was Days Without End by Sebastian Barry. This one blew me away. I remember being like a page or two pages in and being like, oh shit, yeah, this is incredible. So it's set in the mid 1800s in America and it's about this character called Thomas McNulty and his partner John Cole and they both join the American army 
and so it's during sort of civil war uh, era and the Native American wars and it's due to events in the book again I don't want to spoil it they are trying to just create this family together with this Native American girl who they end up taking care of and it's just written so poetically like the atmosphere and it, oh, it's just so beautifully written I just didn't want it to end and again I got that out from the library but I want to own a copy myself it was outstanding outstanding I'd re I'd probably rank that second in if I was going to rank this five star list Bedlam Stacks would probably be first Days Without End would be a very close second so after that it was They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera this was just a really cute read I uh, cried again of course because I cried everything we know this um, but it was just a really nice cute quick read so it's set in a world where in your last 24 hours you get contacted by this company called Deathcast and they say yep you're in your, 20, you're in your last 24 so you know do whatever get ready for that they don't tell you specifically when you're going to die or they don't tell you how either. And so in a world such as that, there's different things created. And one of them is this app called Last Friend where you can connect with either people who aren't going to die, who can help you live out your last days in whatever way, or other people who have been told they're in the, their last 24 hours. And so it's about these two teenage boys who have very different lives and they connect through the app and they sort of help each other live out those last 24 hours so they say goodbyes to people they clear up you know unfinished business try and have a bit of fun and it's just about their relationship coming closer together as well and again even though it tells you in the title that they both die at the end it really it really uh, really made me not shocked but I was just like no and I cried of course I did and so the last book which again I have here of the year my five star was The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang so this is a graphic novel and I'm so glad I bought it I first heard about this online when I think it had a kickstarter that was being set up to, to get it published and I saw her art and I was like oh my goodness when that comes out I need to own it so I got it for Christmas and it's just stunning and I'm gonna show you a page which because I've technically recorded this already and by that I mean talking to the camera without it recording I know which page I want to show you so there's this one it's absolutely stunning so it's about a prince who likes dressing up in dresses and he obviously feels he has to keep that a secret so he hires a dressmaker who he sort of notices at one event where she designs something very special for someone and he hires her to make gowns for him so that he can go out at night and he has this persona called Lady Crystalia and so he, he hires her but keeps her a secret and it's about their relationship with the secret and him trying to hide this side of himself from the world and still try and be a prince and his you know father his father and mother's son and the relationship with the dressmaker and her wanting really to be noticed for her creations but having to keep them a secret and it's just so beautiful I wish there was so much more like I, I, I don't know whether there's a second part in the works or whether this is it but it's just outstanding so I very recommend buying that and so those are all my five stars of 2018 there were a lot of four stars that almost made it to five stars and didn't so maybe I'll, I'll go through them and see what they were and I might do a video on those later because a lot of them were really really good and I'd probably recommend them even though they didn't make that last star so other than that I feel like I shouldn't go backwards and cover other things and so I'm going to try and focus on 2019 I set my goal for this year to 45 because I went past my 40 goal of last year so hopefully I'm on track for that I've already read two and I've got a couple that are, I'm midway through so yeah to lots more videos in 2019 thank you so much for watching